Hello, hello, hello. My name is Monica Henderson, and I am hosting today this conversation about networking at the Activate Symposium. Uh, we are here to activate your zone of genius. So if you're curious as to how you can really present yourself better on screen, or maybe you're just a little shy and have a hard time really connecting to an audience, or maybe you just aren't sure exactly where you can go to do these presentations so you can get those referrals in your business, well, you are going to want to meet our panelists for today as they are experts in networking and presentations, and we are going to dive into this topic today. If you are watching on whatever platform you're watching, feel free to chime in like Miss Peggy did right here uh, and let us know what you're thinking. If you have any questions, comments, rude remarks, we will take them all because you are a part of this conversation as well. Welcome to the Activate Symposium. Joining me today, I have a fantastic group of women. We're all girls today. Uh, so first helping us have this conversation is Colleen Struby. Uh, Colleen Struby is the follow-up fortune finder uh, and helps people really understand how, how follow-up helps them go from connections to currency. We also have the lovely Amy Lancy, who is a communication consultant, but more than that, she is the introvert whisperer. She can help an introvert find their inner extrovert and help them really tap into all of those. Look at, we have our, our audience already chiming in. Look at that. I love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> all of those presentations, those scary moments, really lancing the dragon in the room to help them open up in that way. And then if you are not sure about how to have a amazing presentation, well, then you're going to be excited to hear from Jen because Jen helps you speak like a boss. Uh, that's right. <laughs> she is a presentation expert and helps all of us really lean into our best presentations. All right, ladies, are you guys ready to dive into our topics today? Can't wait. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. All right. So first question of the day is really as simple as why are presentations so important when you are um, when you are trying to grow your business? Um, and so we'll start with uh, we'll start with Colleen, and then we'll work our way around. How about that? Yeah. Well, I think um, presentations. I look at that as personal networking, right? And you're doing your presentations. You're out there. It's it's how people get to know you, like you, trust you, and then remember you. So um, it, coming, being able to tell people what you do in a way that they go, they lean in and going, oh, tell me more is really the ideal way of, of working in your presentations. So. Absolutely. Uh, Amy, what about you? Why are presentations so important? So I, I love that you call me the introvert whisperer. I never thought about myself that way, but you're right. You're right. <laughs> so here's a specifically if you're an introvert, you know, presentations are important for growing your business because you know we're not, we may be social butterflies, some of us, but it drains us. And so I personally love presentations because I'm I'm an ambivert, so I have introverted tendencies. And so I love the idea of preparing for something, getting on stage, having everyone's undivided attention, saying my piece, and then walking away. And then whoever <laughs> is attracted to me can come after me after that. So and, and it's just it's just a time. And even if you're not an introvert, you know, for for you to have a period of time when you could just give a the audience a big dose of what you have to offer you know it's huge it's important and it's a it's a it's a fantastic way to find leads absolutely jen you want to chime in on this conversation oh yeah absolutely so raise your hand if you are watching and you like to watch shark tank oh, i've been there yeah. I mean, I'm obsessed with Shark Tank, right? And if you're the kind of person who's like, yeah, but I don't ever want to be that person who's pitching for money, I totally get it. But anytime you're up in front of a group of people, you are pitching something. Even if you don't want to be the salesy person, even if you're not looking for $100,000 from a shark on TV, you are sharing something that's super important to you that is part of your critical mission the best way to do that is to communicate clearly, which includes both what you say and what you don't say. So I like to help people kind of get into their zone of genius. Part of it's preparation and part of it is just being in the moment and being present when you're connecting to your inner mission. So I love helping people with that. 
Yeah, I, you know, I am a true introvert and, and suffer from social anxiety. So uh, when uh, Amy and I connected, it was really over that, <laughs> that, that bonding of introverts who have to be, uh, you know, external. And one of the phrases that I always say is, you know, I'm an introvert and it would be my best life to be able to sit on my couch and have money come to me, but it's never going to happen that way. Right. <laughs> uh, if I want to eat, I have to go outward. And I love the fact that presentations not only are small things, right. In those small areas in which we kind of connect and, in um, in kind of, um, we're able to really kind of connect to an audience and then they can, we can draw them in the ones who really want to be a part of it, but also it's a great way for us to share our passion. Uh, so as we're kind of thinking more about like this, um, why presentations are, in so, are so important, what is, what would you say the most important thing to think about is when you are uh, choosing what kind of presentation or what group of people that you want to present to, um, what are some things we should really consider uh, when we're thinking about like, I want to present my business not now, uh, and how should I go about doing that? So uh, Jen, let's let's go back to you and kind of have you you start this round. Awesome. Well, as a public speaking coach, a lot of people who come to me have this a vision of doing a TED Talk or something like that, where you've got 20 minutes of very specific content that you're delivering, usually with PowerPoint slides, and you may or may not travel for that opportunity. It's published to YouTube, that sort of thing. But what a lot of people don't consider is TED Talks can only do so much for you. Uh, they're generally not paid. They have a very specific format that you have to follow, and people spend sometimes years practicing and rehearsing their TED talk. So I like to help people identify when I work with clients, like what is your ideal stage? I've been on various different platforms from podcasts to radio to TV, but I know what my ideal stage is. So, you know, I like to do the variety, but some people are like, no, nah, I'm introverted. I feel uncomfortable. I have anxiety. That's totally cool. Maybe a retreat might be a better place for you to intimately connect with the kind mm. of people you I also have people take a look at their um, secret sauce, if you will. I'm a very high energy person, so I can do a keynote if that's something that comes up for me. But some people are more, um, I guess, low energy or more education based. And those types of people would benefit more from a workshop style of presentation or mm -hmm. something where they can rely upon notes or facilitating an experience for their audience. So I love helping people figure out what is your secret sauce and um, what makes you feel more comfortable to get in front of people and and the people, how they like to gather. Not every one of us wants to be on a huge stage with a big TV screen and jumping across the stage. That's okay, but there are many different ways to speak. Absolutely. Colleen, I know you're a networker, and so you probably know some, some great places <laughs> that people can do these presentations. Yeah, well, like um, Jen was saying, like there's all these different types of places, and, and a lot of times people don't realize that even when you're doing a one-to-one, -one, you're doing a presentation, right? So, and you know, you can look at it that way. And I was like, Jim was saying like, I never thought of myself like with the mic on the big stage. That wasn't something that like, yes, I have to do that. That wasn't like the dream. But what I realized that, um, cause I want like everyone in the room to know me and know how I can help them and be a resource and all that. And the fastest way to do that is through presentations, right? Is, is it stepping up, taking that mic and doing it at, at a level where you are talking to a group of people and be able to uh, get your message across because it's, it's saving you obviously time and money. And it, it just lends so much more credibility when you're in, when you're on a stage, right? So that you can do your presentations from a stage. And, and I think, one of the other things you need to realize is, is like, who is that audience, right? Because you don't want to just like go and do your presentation in front of somebody like who doesn't really, that's not your, you know, your ideal clients or the, yeah. your strategic partners or, you know, people who are like, make sense. It's like, you, you want to be strategic about where you're, you're out there and doing um, your presentation. So, but absolutely. If someone asks me to talk, I'm usually like, okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Amy, what are for especially for those introverts out there, those, you know, as the introvert, 
whisperer, where are some places that you would suggest uh, people who are a bit shy about um, about you know presenting uh, some places that they can start? So I would first ask the question of where does my audience roam? Where do they love to go to? Where do they hang out? What's a fishing hole that I can go to? For instance, I have a client who has a course all about retirement living. And this is this is a course that is geared toward people who are 60 years old and above. And so she just started going to AARP meetings, knowing mm -hmm. that her audience is right there. So while I'm not saying you need to go and kiss babies and give hugs to everyone, <laughs> what I am saying is just get into the mind of your your ideal client and think about where are they roaming? Where are they going? Where will they naturally be? What's their what's their environment? Uh, and I would just kind of naturally go there, you know, just check it out, see what they're all about, the group, I mean, and, you know, see if there's any speaking opportunities and just like, just get to understand who is the decision maker in that group if they do have speaking opportunities. And then when you get there, get your foot through the door, that's the opportunity to ask them, well, who is, who is my audience really, you know? And that gives you an opportunity to craft the language within your presentation such that it is the same language that your audience is speaking. Yeah. So, you know, the you guys are like spot on them. I'm, I'm like damn near in tears. This, this is a great conversation, especially <laughs> if you're someone who's sitting in the audience and you know you're, you've had those conversations like, OK, I know I need to put myself out there. I know I need to start talking to people. They keep saying that this is the way to do it. And I'm having a hard time kind of getting over myself, getting my, getting out of my own way in order to do that. And so I love the advice that you guys have all given about this. Uh, so I guess the curiosity that kind of brings me around with that is, um, so when, when you are giving a presentation, how does that actually help you activate your zone of genius, right? Like, how does that actually help you move you along in your vision for for what you're trying to do and your passion? Um, how does that help in that way? Uh, Amy, we'll start with you this time. Whenever I give a presentation, I'm always giving the intention to show up powerfully. And to show up powerfully means to be myself and to remember my mission at hand. So my, my company's name is Untold Story. And I'm always reminded of what the great Maya Angelou once said. She said, um, there's no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. And so when I remember, whenever I think about that line and I'm about to go on stage, I remember that, oh, this is an opportunity to tell people my untold story. And I get to walk my walk and talk my talk and I walk my talk. So uh, that being said is, you know, that's what really, you know, really comes into play when I'm about to go on stage. And I think that that helps me quell my nerves. And even if I'm nervous and jittery, if I just remember, hey, this is, there's a thin line between what I'm feeling now and excitement. And if I could just push the needle over to excitement, I will be so much better and having fun. Yeah, I love that. Uh, Jen, did you want to um, kind of answer how does how do presentations help you activate your zone of genius? Well, for some people watching, they, they may feel like I'd rather do anything in the whole entire world than do a presentation right now, especially an impromptu one. And here's what I have to say to that. If you're a business owner, if you have a mission, you're going to have to talk to people eventually. Would you rather spend that time talking one on one with 20 different people, which would take you 20 hours in your week, perhaps? Or would you like to spend one hour talking to 50 people in a single room? I know which one I would choose because you know time is super important to me. Flexibility and freedom are super important to me. I have two children I'm raising at home and it, you know, let's be efficient with our time as business owners, because if we can't be efficient, then we're wasting a lot of our effort and energy on things that may not move the needle for us. There's nothing more powerful than you standing up there in your zone of genius and sharing something that touches your heart 
and your audience's heart. So as far as I'm concerned, public speaking is where it's at. If you're not doing it because you're scared or nervous, there are certain rituals you can do ahead of time. Like Amy said, she you know reminds herself of why she's up there and to be powerfully present. You can do all sorts of things to prepare yourself ahead of time. And once you're there, you will know, you will sink into that knowledge that I am where I need to be in this mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. The the last on stage in person event that I, I a presentation I give gave uh, one of the things that I, I said to everyone is, you know, no one's asking you to give information about stuff you don't know. Uh, everyone knows their name, everyone knows their business and everyone knows the details of their particular business. It's really just pulling those things forward. Uh, and so what you guys are saying is absolutely accurate. And as a person who has to slay that dragon, every time I have to talk to strangers, I get it. <laughs> I totally get it. Great advice is being given here. I don't know if you guys are picking up these gems. And if you have any questions for experts and you're just now I'm tuning in or uh, checking us out, feel free to drop your um, your comments in the chat. And we will put them on the screen for you. Um, while you're thinking about your questions, comments, or rude remarks that you're going to give us, uh, we would love to have Colleen answer that same question. So why do presentations um, help you activate your zone of genius? I think if you, um, like, like you were saying, Monica, is like, you know what you want to say, right? And and yes, it may come out differently at different times, or you might trip up on a word or here or something like that. But if you're really tapping into your zone of genius, that's going to show when you do your presentations, right? You're just going to get into this flow that like you're serving, right? If, if you're looking at, if you're on the stage because you want to serve the people who are in the audience um, with your message, then it, that becomes your zone of genius. And then the fact that it will just naturally come out um, mm -hmm. because you're going to be tapping into it um, when you're sharing your message and what you do. So, Oh yeah. It's uh, it's when you really love what you do, you kind of light up when you're talking about it, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it kind of glows from the inside out as opposed to being forced that forced smile, right? And so I, I do notice a, a lot of times when there are people who are nervous about their <laughs> about their presentations, those first few moments where they have to talk about themselves, they're like, ah. and then as soon as they start talking about the part that they love, you just kind of see them relax. Yeah, there's a flow, right? right? <laughs> they're flowing. You're, so you're absolutely right. I love that. So just out of curiosity and just for our audience's um, point of view, I am curious about what is each of your zone of geniuses uh, mm -hmm. here on, on our stage. And I, I kind of know a little bit. Um, we've spoke a little bit about your zone of genius, but I would love to give you guys an opportunity to share what your zone of genius is. So we'll start with Jen. So what is your zone of genius? What turns you on to uh, do every day with your clients? I only need one of these. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have more than one, of course, multi-passionate entrepreneur, but I'm a professional speaker who helps women leaders show up confidently in their personal and professional lives. So through a combination of public speaking techniques, I help you create your signature speech. If you've never done a signature speech or heard of it, it's basically your foundational message that you have to share with the world whatever format that message takes place in. I also help people unscript themselves. Mm -hmm. So we have a horrible uh, influx of people who are overly scripting and noting down every single word they have to say and getting all up in their heads about saying everything perfectly or showing up a certain way. So I like to help um, sp especially spiritual entrepreneurs and wellness entrepreneurs recognize that you have some intuitive and empathic tools with within yourself that you can use in the moment as you're doing your presentation. So I like to do a mixture of preparation because we rise to the level of our preparation when we're on stage, but also grounding yourself to be clear on your message and to let it come forth in the manner in which you can do it best. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, that unscripting, we all went, mm. <laughs> Cause it's so, it's so incredibly true, right? Like um, we have seen those people who stayed to the script and like, we just wanted them to please break away from the script and just talk to us like a normal human. So that, I think that resonated with me. I don't know uh, with uh, Amy and Colleen, if that resonated with you as well. Yeah. 
I don't think I've said the same speech twice at this point. You know, there's certain <laughs> sections and topics that you bring in, but but yeah, I I tend to like speak from the heart is the way I talk about. You know, it's like when you get in, and and that's why I feel like sometimes, and and maybe I, I need to talk with Jen. You know, because I there's times when you talk about you know say too many ums or mm, and you know because I'm it's it's calculating up there in the head and overthinking as she was saying and and. You know, it's like, okay, I've got it. But it's, you know, when you get into that flow and you really just, you know, saw, you know, especially because I love to interact with the audience, like she was saying about like a workshop type of thing. Um, I love doing that piece of it so that you're you're gathering information from the people and, and doing um, and, and then responding in, in real time to what their needs are. So, yeah, I love that. Amy, did you want to chime in on that unscripted of it all? I was going to say my zone of genius that oddly segues with that, maybe not so oddly. Uh, my zone of genius is that I'm a walking mirror for people. So in other words, there's there's something about me where when I'm with somebody, they see themselves in a different way or they finally they finally see themselves <laughs> as part of the unscripting, right? Um, and so what I mean by that is that sometimes I'll sit with somebody and they will tell me their untold story or they will tell me a story they've never told anyone before. And it's not because I am doing trickery or casting spells. It's just <laughs> that whatever, whatever there is about me, um, I pull that out of them. And, and when they when they're able to see that it's easier for them to understand what is it that they really do and how do they really communicate that. Um, we kind of touched a little bit about this, but um, the first principle of my mastermind, which is called the milk crate, uh, the first principle is lead with your heart because when you lead with your head, that's when confusion happens, right? Mm -hmm. And then the second principle is embrace rejection because it's a part of life and there's a lesson behind every event of rejection whether it's your fault or the other person's fault. And then the third one is change your language. So it doesn't mean you give up your voice. It just means that you become aware of your surroundings. You become aware of the people that you're talking to and you, you, you switch up some of your wording in order to open that door of opportunity. Oh yeah. That, uh, thank you for those really quick, <laughs> those really quick get right moments right there. I love that. Um, the, in, the, so the interesting part about um, what both of your zone of genius are is they're similar but different. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I love about that is um, one of the kind of major missions for Mink Life Motivation is to, to share with people that there are different different strokes for different folks, right? There are different um, experts for different people and different needs and different stages of, of the game. And the way that you guys connect with people um, mm -hmm. is different, but in the end, they kind of get to a, a, symbi a, a similar place. So I love, love that. And I love being able to put these kinds of stories on display, these kinds of people on display for the world to see that there are amazing people that you can connect with that are tangible. They're not these big, like huge celebrity coaches, um, but they're real, real people offering real help in real time for you. Uh, and uh, so I just love that. And I'm, I love having you guys on the stage for that. Um, sorry, I got a little battery situation here. <laughs> um, so uh, um, Colleen is one of our trainers here at Mink Life Motivation. And, and so she was able to share what her zone of genius was last week. Um, but for the record, if you want to share quickly what your zone of genius is as well, that'd be awesome. Now, what was it last week? Because I'm going to see if I changed it this week. <laughs> Impromptu. Oh, true story. True story. <laughs> now, so I, I, I consider my zone is being the, the hub or the connector. So I love connecting um, people to those tools and resources they need and those other people. And we looked at um, being an includer um, in the sense of, 
you know, being able to include people in the conversation and what they're doing. So, and oh no, did we lose Monica? She'll be back. <laughs> oh, no, I'm here. I just had oh. to go plug my computer in so that. Oh, I don't there we go. <laughs> I was oh. like, we're we're gonna carry on the conversation until she gets back. So <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you know? No, no, I'm here, and um, I was like using your your spot as a moment for me to make sure that I don't leave the the conversation there altogether. Go. Um, but you know. Uh, so what is so very interesting about all of these things is um, people think presentations, and I, I think Colleen alluded to it earlier, is that presentations is only when you have to prep for a long period of time and stand in front of a large group of people. Um, but there are some really intimate ways that you can present yourself and present your story uh, and, and share what you're doing um, that are... Uh, just as impactful. And we kind of alluded to that a little bit in, in the conversation before. But one of the things is networking groups. And since this is a networking conversation, uh, what are some things that people, um, when they're engaging in their, you know, their BNI chapters or their team referral network chapters or their local networking groups, what are some ways that they can be more impactful in those networking situations when they're presenting their businesses. Uh, let's start with uh, Jen again for this one. Did you know that up to 70% of speakers are actually introverts? Ooh. Ooh. I brought that up because if you're in a networking situation and you start with, I help X, Y, and Z do ABC so that they can one, two, three. That's probably not the best way for you to begin your little elevator pitch or whatever you want to call it. You do want to catch their attention with what we call an icebreaker or a factoid. If you're a factoid person, I like numbers, so I'll toss some numbers or stats out there. Uh, just try to try to pique their interest a little bit, especially when you have 15, 20 other people who are following the same format. Your job is to shake things up a little bit <laughs> to get people to like perk up and be like, oh, I need to listen to this person because you're changing how the flow goes within that setting. So that's one of my tips. Okay, awesome. Amy, what about you? Uh, my tip is to be able to describe what you do such that a third grader can understand. So that means <laughs> keep it simple no flowering language don't put a five minute monologue into 30 seconds <laughs> where it's like people can get it like for me i would describe my what i do to a third grader as i help business owners to find the right words to describe what they do boom and i know i always throw people in networking meetings off when i say that because they're like and then i'm like no that's it like <laughs> that's it. <laughs> keep it that because i know that if you're in a room of 70 people and if every single one is giving an elevator pitch, well, guess what? After the fifth person, everyone has tuned out. So you got to like mm -hmm. keep it simple. Yeah. Love that. Colleen. Yeah. I'm going to uh, piggyback on what they're saying. So the tell what problem you solve versus what your title is in the sense, you know, yes. how many times, like I'm a realtor or I'm a mortgage person or I, like, okay, we know that, but like, how, how do you differentiate you from the other five realtors, mortgage people who are in the room, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's um, like you said, you know, something catchy or, or things that they can remember, um, get them to ask a, like, ask a question. Like I, you know, I help people find the fortune in the follow-up oh, well, how, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Right. So you want to get it to the point so that they, you know, they're asking a question, they're getting engaged. Yeah. I, I love that. Um, <laughs> and I guess I just renamed Amy as well. So she's the introvert whisperer now, but I, I do love when people can, um, when you can really um, identify yourself as something different as a person who managed 14 networking uh, groups here in Los Angeles locally. I heard all of the pitches and they were all the same and the food was all the same. So there was really not, there was really nothing different from each one, but then every now and then someone would tell a great story or a testimonial mm -hmm. or they would break that pattern um, and that would work. One of the things that I also... I would throw in there, even though I'm not a panelist, but I'm gonna throw it in there, is changing the, 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 the actual tone of your voice to either be higher or lower than everyone mm -hmm. else in the room. 
Um, one of the things uh, there, there was a, a guy in, in the networking group that I met Colleen in, his name was Tommy and he'd come in and he'd talk like a radio announcer. And all of a sudden everybody <laughs> would wake up on their little boxes and they'd be like, Oh, okay. Wow. I like your energy, right? He changed the energy with his, with his voice and how he actually projected. And then sometimes someone will come in and they'll be really soft and everybody will have to lean in a little bit to understand what they're saying. Oh, okay. Or like calm with their voice. I know uh, one of the people in my current networking group, she, she, she sounds like she has all the time in the world for her one minute commercial because she speaks <laughs> as though she has all the time in the world. She doesn't say a lot, but she gives it so much breath and space mm. that it feels like we're, we're having a whole 20 minute conversation with her in one minute. And so the, just those, those kinds of things, like Jen was saying, kind of changing it up and being different uh, than everybody else in the room is yeah. super mm -hmm. crucial to all of these things. Yeah. So as have, you, I was going to say one more thing might be have a visual, right? Yeah. Sometimes like if you, yeah. have, if your product can have a visual, you know, that way that, you know, it's something they can see in here, you know, um, it's just added touch. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And don't be afraid to be dramatic. Like it's hard <laughs> to do that in a 2D situation, but mm -hmm. if you're in person, I love that. Don't sit here like this. And yeah, this is what I do. This is how I, yeah. no, like it, expand your presence. Yeah. People want to work with people that love what they're doing and doing it. So very true. Absolutely. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I kind of pull on my cheerleading days. Um, <laughs> I thought I used to be a cheerleader, um, even though I'm an, an introvert. And even though I have no idea, I have no desire for people to look at me. I do <laughs> love cheering people on and I do love dancing and I do love being able to use my voice. And so one of the things that I that I do in networking opportunities, for instance, is I, I leave, like I let my passion of what I am doing well up inside of me so that when it's time for me to speak, I'm like, okay, I'm Monica Henderson and I'm excited because this is what I'm doing to change the world and I want you to do it too. And then all of a sudden there's like a different kind of like, me who shows up as opposed to the me who's like, oh crap, it's almost my turn. Oh my God, they said I'm next. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. It's coming, yes. you know, oh crap, <laughs> you know? So really kind of taking all of that anxious energy and turning it into, okay, we're gonna ball all that passion up and we're gonna let it out for these people. So it's one of the things that I love doing um, in these networking situations. So, um, so one of the things that I wanted to kind of, you know, I guess shift gears a bit and talk about is what are some myths that there are about presentations and how to be a great presenter? I mean, I know uh, we have two presentation experts on the panel here, so I know we're going to get some good stuff. I hope you got your pens and pencils uh, ready to understand what we've been lied to about when it comes to these presentations. <laughs> what are some myths uh, that people think, uh, think about when they're doing presentations that are just not true? Um, so Amy, did you want to start? Yes. So you don't have to be this, you don't have to suddenly turn into this, this typical charismatic car salesman in order to give a presentation. I mean, it's great if that is how you naturally are, but if you're not, then you don't have to pre, I mean, you just don't have to pretend to be someone else, period. So there is a way to make presenting work for you naturally without having to be like, I'm going to take on this other persona over there. That's someone else's persona. It's like, that's not the only persona that people will resonate with you. they are parts of you that people will resonate with. It's just yeah. a matter of coming out of your shell. Yeah, that's so true. If you think about comedians, they're all very mm -hmm. different and yet they all kind of get the same point, right? Exactly. Like the point of laughter. So that makes sense. Uh, uh, is uh, How does that myth uh, resonate with both you, uh, Jen, and, and Colleen about that, like that thought that, oh, well, I have to show up and be somebody else in order for me to give a great presentation? Well, that's Either. interesting because uh, if you're showing up, chances are good you're going to show up in your comfort zone or maybe a little bit outside of your comfort zone. So you literally cannot be anyone else but yourself in that moment. <laughs> so that's one thing I wanna call out in the industry. There's no way for you to be inauthentic as a presenter. It doesn't mm -hmm. exist. You will always mm -hmm. be who you are mm -hmm. meant to be. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, there's nothing wrong with throwing a little drama in there and making it yeah. interesting for your audience. Mm -hmm. 
in the way that feels right for you. And uh, I can't tell people what that is until I meet with them one to one. Yeah. But um, everyone has their flair and their style and their way mm -hmm. of delivery. Um, one thing that I think is a myth is mm -hmm. you get some kind of award for like saying as many words as you possibly can and stuff that <laughs> one hour and uh, respect all the things, right? You know, <laughs> there's no award the for that. Mm -hmm. This is not a merit. This is not a race. You know, you don't collect <laughs> mileage for the words. Mm -hmm. And uh, depending on depending on your audience, yeah. if there's more men in that audience, they won't hear half of what you're saying anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's the deal. Utilize the power of the pause, my friends. <laughs> I love that. Oh, <laughs> that was great. But so I totally hear you. I hear you saying that you can't show up as yourself. Uh, you can't not show up as yourself. Uh, it's going to end up being which version of yourself you want people to see as opposed to which yes. one they're not. Totally hear that. And I totally hear that essentially you just want to be a caricature of who you are this the a little bit more drawn out a little bit more dramatic version of yourself yes. is that what i'm hearing yes oh yeah good student here all right colleen <laughs> so what is a myth about presentations that uh we want to debunk in this industry well i think uh jen said it earlier another one was that the fact that everything had to be scripted right? So that you have to come back. So I think that was one we want to just highlight again, that you you don't have to do that. You can, you know, come out, you need to be prepared, like she said, but not, um, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I forgot that word. Now I got to go back. And, you know, because I've done that in my head before. It's like, you want to throw and it's like, oh, crap, I didn't say that word. So now I got like, and then you get thrown off, right? And, and instead of just having like bullet points in your head, and then, and then talk to those and tell stories to those. Um, I think the other thing is, is like you were saying about showing up. I think you don't have to show up all in what we'll call from the bank language and a action style, you know, um, all up in everything. It's, it's like be in the also like help with what the audience is. Right. So that you can um, do, you know, be yourself, but then be able to, um, present in a way that everyone's going to to it's going to resonate with them right so absolutely so one uh one of my favorite things i don't know if you guys ever saw the documentary uh homecoming uh, beyonce's coachella uh concert so there's a lot of scenes of her in rehearsal right and she's like talking about like the show starts in rehearsal uh and uh, in the end, no one knows the mistakes I make on stage. So if I get really good in rehearsal, then I'll be able to go from one moment to the next without actually missing a beat, even if there it wasn't a scripted part of what we were doing. Um, I at least know spatially where I'm supposed to be. So I think that that uh, kind of theme keeps coming up in this particular conversation. I was like, this sounds a lot like what Beyonce was saying. <laughs> there you go. Right? Where it's like- Be yourself, right? From, yeah. from, from rehearse, uh, so you know, Aladdin. That's from Aladdin. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, rehearse so you know exactly where you are in your talk and what, you're, what points you're supposed yes. to get across. Uh, but then be in the flow of uh, in concert, if you will, when you are actually giving your presentation, um, you know, allowing yourself to really show up authentically and presently uh, as yourself. I am digging this conversation. Yeah. So, yeah. And I was going to say, and if you forget something, which I, uh, every speaker has, right? You've forgotten mm -hmm. something. Don't beat yourself up over it because they didn't know about it. And you can just, that's, that's a great time to... Yeah. have an extra follow-up. Oh, uh, one other thing I wanted to tell you and, you know, follow up that way. I, so. I was also going to add, since Monica, you mentioned Beyonce, doesn't Beyonce go by Sasha Fierce when she's on <laughs> yes. stage? And so maybe that's another tip to follow from her is if you, if giving yourself a different name <laughs> going on stage will get yeah. you to switch hats, then go for it. I've not tried that yet, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> we'll let you know how that goes. I'll try it. You mean maybe you're not the introvert whisperer when you're on stage? <laughs> like, I'm just like, I'm just gonna be. I'm gonna just like pop on stage and do my thing. 
Oh yeah, yeah. no, I uh, my my hangups don't allow me to just show up and be on stage at first. Uh, the first ten minutes are always <laughs> are always scary, uh, always scary. It never fails. Um, and 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 you know, t- truthfully, I, I I had crippling social anxiety. So the fact that I was on stage in the first place, it was really a victory in itself. Um, and then once I go into, once I go into, again, the parts that I love and like really kind of connecting in and being in that moment. And I try to pick on someone in the audience, right. To like have a direct conversation with, uh, several people in the audience along the way. Um, all of those things really, really help. Um, but it is that practice, that practice ahead of time. And also realizing, um, how I broke through my social anxiety was, um, I was, my mom forced me to be a dancer. My mom forced me to do a lot of things, but she forced me to be a dancer. And so that that thing that they always say in dance practice, no, unless you tell someone you made a mistake, they don't know you made a mistake. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you guys are kind of like leaning into all these performance things that I've heard for forever. It's like, no one knows your arm was supposed to be here instead of here. So you just pretend like, confidently, this is what I meant to say, or this is what I meant to do, uh, and they'll believe it. And so that whole stage presence uh, is there. You know, I feel like we did bust some myths here. And also, I want to just pull out of that conversation really quick that half the people in the room may not hear all of the words that you're saying. (laughs) (laughs) So be very specific about the words that you repeat (laughs) over and over again, because those are the ones that they're probably hearing. Thank you, Jen, for that one. you know, questions, comments, rude remarks. If you don't like what we're saying, tell us. <laughs> Join the conversation. I think we missed one myth out there too. And I, I okay. really, this is something I'm super passionate about. So if you will indulge me for a moment. Absolutely, go for it. When you're a speaker, it's not about you at all. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people think this about other speakers they see on stage. They're like, oh, it's a show. It's the celebrity. It's the influencer. It's not about us. It never was, it never will be. Mm -hmm. And the more you are in your head about that, the less you will be available to your audience and the less they'll like you and resonate with what your message is anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's your job to put on your costume and make sure all those things ahead of time are great so you can get out of your head about those things and into and into the heads of the people you're speaking to. Uh, That That is a great myth. Thank you great myth to be busted. Cause I, I do think people feel like, oh my gosh, but they're looking at me. Oh, oh yes. So um, as we are kind of rounding the basis here, what are some, what are your last thoughts about presentation? So if we can leave our audience and I'll give you guys a couple minutes each to kind of give your last lasting impression about presentations. And I'll start with Colleen and we'll end with our, our not, uh, our guest lecturers uh, for the Meet Black community. Um, what is your, the, if you could just get one message forward, if you could speak to that one person who is, knows they need to do presentations as a part of their marketing strategy, as a part of their networking strategy, and you know you want to help them get over that hump. What is that one, just one thread of wisdom that you can give them, speak to them right now and give them that opportunity to do that. Colleen, we'll have you go first. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the first thing is, is start small, practice and keep doing it. And as you um, perfect your messaging, you'll be able to then take it to the next level and just put yourself out there for the opportunity that it's going to happen. Right. So there's I've been starting to get uh, with my fall in love with follow up and starting to talk to people about it. And some great speaking opportunities are like happening. Right. So you just need to be open to the fact that that's going to happen and step into it. Um, As we were saying, do um, be yourself and then uh, work on the way of just stepping into it and realize that it's going to be okay on the other end. Thank you, Colleen. Okay, and we're gonna have uh, Amy. Uh, so what is the one thing you want to share? I would say that when you're looking at doing presentations for your business, own your weirdness. Own your weirdness. It is totally great and awesome to be weird. I tell my seven-year-old daughter that 
all the time. And I say that because sometimes we get caught up in looking perfect, saying all the words, not stuttering, not stumbling. And here's the thing is the more you own your weirdness, that means you're owning your coolness and it's easier to be more confident in yourself. I was just telling an audience earlier that in order for people to be sold on you, you need to be sold on yourself. Mm -hmm. And just to give you a real life example, I did a TikTok video about two days ago. And normally my TikTok videos get maybe a handful of views. But here I am in this TikTok video being my normal quirky self, talking about something that was redundant and I threw zombies in there. And then somehow over the last 48 hours, I have 2,100 views. I don't know. I think I could, I could just, the only thing I can come up with is that I owned my weirdness in that video. So you just, you just never know how much more of an impact you can make when you own your weirdness. Thank you. Own your weirdness. I love that. All right, Jen, bring her home. What is the, you know, the last thoughts about presentations and what they should consider uh, for their own business? I see you out there. I hear you. And I know you can get on more stages to share your important message with the world. It starts with that signature speech. So if you have no idea how to craft that, let me support you along that mission. It will be a fun experience. And once you have one solid piece of speech and presentation, you can take that same one and pitch it wherever you want. If you want to pitch it, you can even get paid to do that presentation. So you can get paid to show up and you can get paid to work with people who are naturally attracted to your messaging. I don't know anything that's better than that. Let's get you on those stages. Let me help you. Love that. All right. So if you haven't already figured out presentations, super huge when it comes to building your business, not only for those one minute commercials uh, and elevator pitches that you have to do in your networking groups, but it, it you know, those 10 minute presentations, 20 minute hour keynotes, uh, and even just a pitching meeting with your, with your clients, regardless of what it is that you are doing, uh, you have to one, Remember that you have the ability to do, do so and two, realize that everything you want is on the other side of fear. So just do it anyway. And three, connect to people who can help you get over that hump, get over the space of I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. I don't want to do this. You can do this because one of my favorite quotes is uh, we can do anything alone, but we can do everything together. So uh, if you are enjoying this particular conversation, it has been brought to you by the Grand Connections, where there is something grand on the other side of each connection with the community. Uh, so feel free to go to minklifemotivation.com to learn more about the Grand Connections. And if you're interested to uh, see each of these speakers, they are all having a presentation tomorrow. Um, so go to Mink Life Motivation dot com forward slash uh, symposium events where you can sign up to be a part of their events. They're doing live recordings. Uh, and if you miss it, it's OK. We will be able to uh, get you the recording as well. Love to have so many people. And this is exactly what the Mink Life Motivation community is all about. It's about real people offering real help in real time. Thank you so much to my panelists for being here today. You guys are awesome. This was such a fun <laughs> conversation. Literally, we have these kinds of conversations all the time. And so I'm so, exact, I'm so excited to bring this to the public forum so people can see how we really hang. Um, and uh, again, if you are interested in learning more about them or anything here, let us know. Thank you for joining us today for our panel discussion on networking. Uh, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye, guys.